It was on 7th of August when the GNCs had a press conference and where Kasamuel said something that touched me. He said that um, if they see anybody in civilian aboard a government vehicle, that is an enemy. You see, GNC has no hierarchy. So if one person just shouts enough and others say, oh, yeah, yeah, then they follow it, which can be also of a serious consequences. Among the GNCs, I'm sure we have lawyers there. If they are not lawyers, maybe they are first year or even second year law school. Either first year, second year, or even they are the Kenya School of Law, or even they are doing tutelage. I would request you when you are talking over that um, interaction of yours, sometimes forget that you are a GNC and assume that you are a lawyer. Give your colleagues legal advice. Tell them what they can do, what they cannot do. Mob psychology should not even work, especially for anybody who has been to school, any school. Uh, I wanted to say this. If you find somebody suspicious, if you meet somebody you, you are doubting or anything, the thing that there is what we call civilian arrest. You arrest that person, hand him or her to the nearest police station or the nearest police officer or the nearest police landlord. Now saying that seeing anybody in civilian inside a, a police vehicle, that is a, an enemy. Of course, everybody knows you are targeting Everybody knows that you are targeting uh, goons hired by politicians or you are even targeting police officers in the plain clothes. You even went ahead and said no police officer should report on duty in civilian. If they are police officers, they should put on uniform. That is why I said you should use... That is why I said you should uh, use among yourselves, those who are studying or have studied law. First of all, if you have reasonable doubts to believe that so-and-so is a, a goon and you arrest him or her, you don't target him at his big or anything. If you are doubting somebody or anything, you take him or her to the police to investigate. But you seem to be targeting plain cloth police officers. One thing I'm not happy about, GNC, is this. It's like you have discovered the whole world. Okay, you may change things. You may alter here. You may alter the whole Constitution, you may alter all the laws. First of all, when you, I talked of alter, I did say uh, destroy or, de or, or remove, just alter. But when you alter the, 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 the nini, you have to do it just like Omo, o, o, Otienda Amolo used to say. You don't use unconstitutional means to change the Constitution. As we speak now, the government allows NIS to operate in civilian. The government, the, the, the constitution allows DCI to operate in civilian. The government allows, the, 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 the constitution allows the crime branch, nowadays they are called anti-crime branch, to operate in civilian. 
the, the, the constitution allows PIF squad to operate in Sevilla. If at all you want any police officer who is not in uniform to be treated as if he's of, of duty or is not a police officer, go and change the, the, the constitution. <laughs> police are called law enforcement agencies. So theirs is just to enforce. The other thing is, now talking as an NIS person, why do we have, we have very many reasons why police officers in civilian will infiltrate a crowd. Of course, what you are thinking is possible because don't you think it is better for just suddenly the gang leader to be imagine you see remember how you started you are okay and i think i believe you are still okay but suppose somebody there comes inside you and be, pretends to be one of you but is out to loot that is when plain clothes those officers i can signal each other and arrest that person and leave you the agency to continue with what you're doing my experience has it that a fool who is very sure of himself is a very hard person to convince now lastly i want to talk about um, i want to talk about uh, experiences we have had in such a situation uh, some of which has led to some of us even die uh, there is this uh, incident that happened during multi party time at uhuru park where uh, around 1990, yeah, from 1990 onwards, uh, the NIS, by then it was called DSI, Directorate of Security Intelligence, had said that we could recruit members of the administration police and members of the uh, provincial administration to join us. And you see, anybody, you could have a degree but you'd find somebody with a standard seven who has worked there for over 20 years. He has something that uh, is only gained through experience. He may know a lot of things because of experience. So when we were taking these people, they had to take a lot of time to blend with us and to do whatever. And then there is also this problem, like when the police merged with the AP, AP started complaining that they were not being taken to roadblocks for obvious reasons. You know, when somebody complains, I'm not taken to a roadblock, you know why he's complaining, isn't it? But then the, a letter came that all police officers, be they AP or whatever, be they the former APs, should just, they, they, they should not be discriminated that they should not do this type of work or that way. So that type of assimilation is very hard. And it happened that somebody, an a, a former AP who had joined the DSI, which today is called NIS, uh, was covering a meeting at Uhuru Park and he was discovered. And the mob descended on him and he died. And a lot of questions came. But most of the questions came from human rights people and people out there. Because they were saying, Kacheru anakuja hapa kufanya ni. But then there was a question, is, is he not a Kenya? Sincerely speaking. Uh, if you are off duty, or you're on leave, and people are doing mandam, or even Jinsi are holding a press conference, don't you have a right as a, hum, as a, as a Kenya to go and listen to him and maybe whatever? And in fact, Security personnel are the ones who are supposed to even listen to these people. Supposed to listen and uh, they say, hey, Vijana, there's something they are talking. Yeah? So that next time they handle them with care. But then you, you just come out of the place and say, uh, anybody who will be seen in a police vehicle and is in civilian is an enemy. It hurts me. There are so many things, not just this. Every, there are things that I remember my colleagues from the time I joined the police force onwards 
who have died in the line of duty and it hurts me today it hurts me whenever my children visit me with my grandchildren and they be i it, it i try to remember so and so charles kimani were he alive because there is nothing special about uh, koigi koigi who was killed in garissa or kimani who died in westpok there are many when you go to Haiti, the bullet can hit any of you. And whoever comes back without a bullet, it's not that it's better than the others who, who got it. It is just by, it was your day. So, when security officers are, in, actually, in a civilized man, if I had it my way, I would say that for every three uniformed police officers, you should have seven plain clothes. So that while you people are going on saying, oh, Siji, Ruto must go, Ruto must go, as you shout that, and then someone tries to sneak into a shop and anakuta meshikwa na mascara. So uh, that is what, that, that is why I wanted to record today's thing about uh, the hardship, the, the challenges that plain cloth officers face when they are out in such a situation where there are demonstrations and or riots. Thank you.